That was a quick pee. I'll tell you, this guy didn't even shake. <laughs> <laughs> should we should we start? <laughs> yeah, let's start with that. What the hell? Hell yeah. We're rolling. Oh, hey. Hey. Hello. Great guest in studio, Veer Daz. Yeah. Check out his new Netflix special, Landing. No, Please right. do. Yeah. Yeah, very good, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, very I mean, a lot of a lot of controversy. Yes. You've been arrested. <laughs> I was about to and then didn't. Oh, okay. You know, so I've, I've been okay. The cops so like far. you. Yeah, they do. That's like, that really works in your favor. <laughs> it does. Yeah. 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 Cops like comedy. You yeah. walk around they New do. York, cops are like, hey, comedy, Norman, whatever. A tell. They love a tell. I bet the guys who arrested Lenny Bruce were like, we like you. Right. We just have to. <laughs> I saw an Indian cop the other day. Like really? Yesterday in New York City. And, and I, I don't know if that's a thing or it's not a thing, but it just kind of made me happy to see one. Yeah. 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 And I've he never was seen that. like, not, he was average Indian height, which is my height as well. So I'm like, I don't know who you're arresting, but I appreciate that you <laughs> exist. You know? <laughs> you don't see a lot of Jewish cops. No. We're not really representing. Never well, seen a cop. Would be weird if somebody arrests you while complaining about their life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? We, we do the paperwork. But, uh, but yeah, never seen a cop with a yarmulke. No. I mean, you wouldn't. They would have yeah. the hat. Ah, true, true. What about, so for those that don't know, the controversy came from this speech you gave at the Kennedy Center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At the end of a show, it was the two Indias. So here's what I can say about it without yeah. uh, beginning another news cycle for myself. Oh, yeah. So, shit. so uh, I made a YouTube video at the end of my thing at the Kennedy Center. Uh, I'd done a show, put it up, and it was kind of in the vein of many YouTube videos I'd done. And three days, really good stuff, lots of views. And then I think we all have the angry news channel. In oh, our country, yeah. Right? So we have an angry news channel. They picked it up. That led to angry people, angry comments. I was trending. Angry people filed some complaints against me. We didn't know what was going to happen. And I had to turn my phone off for like 45 days. Trending wow. is terrifying. When trending you, is terrifying. When you start comedy, you're like, I wish I was trending. And then yeah. when you're trending, you're like, oh, yeah. God, this is horrifying. Yeah, Cosby was trending. <laughs> exactly. You don't Cosby always want to trend. He's still trending. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's back. Just yeah. got back from Pittsburgh, and more, boy, are my victims tired. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I like that we went from me to Bill Cosby. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> put that out you, there like, what you did, guy. What you did was, I mean, you know, th this is pretty brave what you did, but do you, do you is a part of you regret it? No, uh... I mean, I would probably work on it a little bit more. Like, you know, the, the, my, I think my lesson is, like, so I wrote it at 4 p.m. That's why I have a paper in my hand. Yeah. And uh, so maybe don't treat the Kennedy Center as your open mic, <laughs> like, uh, as your new material night. Well, it was powerful enough to get by without being super punchy. I think so. And, and I think also it was, it kind of came and went. Like, I think there's a six-day news cycle. And if you can find a way to shut the fuck up and just keep your phone away and not counter the void yep. for six days, you'll be okay. Like, Come on, uh, school shooting. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> yeah. So I just kind of went, and, and in that moment, you feel like you're the center of the universe, and you're really not. Right, you right. Know? And so I, I think the perspective is that, uh, of, the, of the special is that, is that if you can just shut up and lie low, love will find you at the end of it. And then I think I discovered just what it means to be a comic. You know, like it's been a year since that happened, but I'm like, I haven't given one interview haven't wow. been on the news, never talked about the content, still don't intend to, because that's not my honor. It's somebody else's honor to critique the content. And I was like, the first thing I write about it has to be a joke. Hmm. You know, because that's the only option a comic has. Yes. But you were called a terrorist by BBC. And like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> really? That's it, the first joke I wrote, but yeah. it, it was... Is March and it happened in November. You're our first terrorist on the I'm, show. Thank you, man. Hey. <laughs> it's big. Not your last, but, <laughs> but but then I think March I finally wrote down like I was on the homepage of the BBC, and the BBC had a headline that said "Comedian polarizes the nation." Do you know how badly you have to fuck up before the British say that you divided? It? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. And then I'm like, okay, this is the joke that doesn't paint me as a victim addresses that there's a fuck up and hopefully makes both sides however you felt about it laugh yeah and i'm like maybe that can be the tone of that's the goal of a comic is yeah. to unify people in the room yeah. and everyone laughs at it right and but, break that tension but it's always so much pressure when you have this big looming thing and you're like i gotta write a bit about it well dude i, I got some strength from like just watching chris rock for instance like you know in in two Perfect weeks example. of what happened to him he's like if you want to hear about my stuff come see my special yeah. But I'm not going on Oprah and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not doing any of that stuff. So I was like, okay, just shut up and write jokes. Yes. And it's here, also here. you build it for your people, not their people. Yeah. 
You yeah. go and your audience will be supportive and under, I mean, and your audience grew like crazy from this, right? It did. Yeah, it did. I think uh, you almost have to do I, something. It's great. not in a way I would recommend. It's a very <laughs> stressful way to, to to gain traction, so yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. But I think I don't know who said this, but maybe it was Louis C.K. or someone. He was like, if you let somebody who's never coming to see you fuck with your head long enough that you are not a hundred percent, but like eighty percent, for someone who is coming to see you, you're being unprofessional. Ah, I agree with that. You know, so whoever is coming to see you, you owe them to send them home flying on a cloud. And I'm like, I, I just have to concentrate on making sure my brain is okay to write jokes for big or small, whatever that crowd is coming to see me. Here, here. You know? It's crazy because some, I mean, look, you see the difference in countries here, like mm -hmm. in America, you, we really, we complain about censorship, but like we get away with a lot. You do. Oh, yeah. But, but I think you have your own version of it, right? Yeah. Uh, here, like for me, that's, Par for the course in like a newer comedy market. In India, so many people watching were watching stand up, and now so many more people are coming in, and that's going to be a first time reaction. Mm. So not knowing how to react to darker material or edgy material or political material, and you got to kind of welcome them and say, okay, every reaction is a valid reaction. Uh, in America, I think because you've been doing it a little bit, you know, you're like, but why this? Re because everybody knows what stand-up comedy protocols are. Right. And now you guys are pivoting to a situation where the audience's voice is as loud as you guys. I know. Yeah. I you hate know? that. Uh, which is, it's a tough pivot. It's I, a bummer. You know, I and will Well, that's just Twitter, right? Yeah. They just, everyone's got a voice. They're yelling out stuff a lot. They yell stuff out, but it's like, it almost keeps you sharp. But isn't that something that the two of you, have, I always see your clips, is it... Like a section of your show when you're done with material and you're like, okay, now you can talk to me? Yeah. Usually that's what I do. Uh, by the way, we should get a drink out here. Uh, uh, Akoi, you're uh, oh, subbing in for the beer Guinness? Jew this week? You better Yo! believe it, Fatty. Yay. Because you're oh, a Guinness yeah. drinker, right, I'm a Guinness drinker. Yes, sir. Thank you, Thank sir. You, boys. you know, I went to uh, Dublin to do a festival and they're like, you got to get the Guinness in Dublin. It's amazing. Same? It's exactly the same. <laughs> totally the same. No difference. Salud, boys. Hey. Oh, hey. Cheers. Thank you, Pat. Mazel. First terrorist. <laughs> Hopefully, don't bomb. Ah. That's pretty good. Mm. I like a Guinness. Good. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's Guinness thick. is a good. Uh, it's a good like first beer. Mm -hmm. You go to the bar, you start with a Guinness, and then you kind of move on. Uh... Really, that's a meal right there. Like that has, <laughs> you know, I think they say like the average Guinness is like four slices of bread. Really? Don't tell that to him. He doesn't eat bread. What? I'm off bread. Since when? Uh, about a, three days. No, no, I've been doing about a year trying and, it. And you're happy? And... I feel better, yeah. I mean, I love pizza, I love sandwiches, I love pancakes, but I just feel cleaner. And you don't do like yeah. one day a week where you go all out or something? Like nah. a rock cheat meal or something? Nah, like? nah. It's we'll, crazy to we'll me. We'll break it every now and then. Me and him will get some waffles or something, but yeah. it's like once a month. Do we have this, in, in Bollywood movies, we have the, the six-pack diet. You know, because mm. uh, in a Bollywood movie, there's six songs, right? And typically for one of those songs, maybe your shirt is off or whatever. And that's brutal as hell because that's um, six weeks, no carbs. One week, no salt. What? Two days, no water. What? No water? Yeah. And so you're drinking like cold green tea just to keep yourself like some liquid, but it passes through you quicker and you're everything will just crunch up. You will look amazing. Really? Right? But you will have the strength of an ant. Right? So, <laughs> so to dance in that moment or to do like a, an intimate scene in that moment is insane. Right. But you look damn good on camera. So if you guys ever have to take your shirt off on screen for anything. Well, he takes it off all the time. Yeah. I, I keep it on out of respect for all the children out there. I, if, I don't want them to look at my patchy, hairy Jew body. It'd be weird guy, if you did your guy. act. Oh. Wrong guy. Yeah. That was me last week. Yeah. And, uh, you look great, dude. No then, then I ate some bread. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> Pakistani, for the record. Did he, did he have to do that, though? Because I've read like conflicting accounts where they were like, Kamel, you don't have to go this far, and he's like, "No, I'm gonna keep going." But if wow. you, if there is, I bet Marvel's paying for it, right? Yeah. If you're on their animal. dime, then it's kind of cool to just get shredded. And he's always an extra mile guy, even with his comedy. Always, yeah. went hard. Yeah. Hey, Pamo, what are you doing here? Hello. She works with Veer. Hey. Pamo. Oh, I didn't know you guys were working together. Yes. I thought you popped in. I feel like you're mad at us right now. That's her general vibe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit down. You're making us nervous. We're in trouble. Never a woman in the oh, room. My God. Stay like this. oh my god! Oh my jeez. Um, what were we talking about? Bollywood. Bollywood. Bollywood yeah. yeah. So, have you done those movies? I've done. I've been in 14 Bollywood. Movies. Wow. 
vet? Yeah, yeah man. Holy shit. You're a shit. vet. Huh? I'm you're a vet, a... yeah. What's and, the difference between two that them, and... Two, two of them were good. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Well, you do those, and then you do the Netflix movie that Judd made. Like, yeah. what, what's the difference between those? Uh, cash. And, uh, <laughs> and also, I mean, Bollywood's a different kind of tone of acting, and it's much tougher. You know, because Bollywood, you have to reach an audience that is so gigantically broad. Right. And also, uh, you know, I say this often, but don't think of a Bollywood movie as, uh, you know, you giving two hours uh, to a movie. Think of a Bollywood movie as those are the only two hours you get in the week. So like for me and my family, like Sunday morning, the only time we got, because everybody works hard, was two hours the entire movie. Uh, the entire family went out for a movie. Mm-hmm. So it's got to be big and bold and escapist and have a little bit of every... Like, if you show a spotlight, we're going to kill ourselves. Like, right. You know, the, broad as hell. Broad as hell. And yeah. and just really magnanimous. You uh, take me out of my life. It's like a road comic. You got to kill for everybody. Yeah. Or like your Marvel movies. You know, right. they, they, they think that's... Marvel is your Bollywood. Ah, uh, yeah. A lot of six packs. Yeah. Revenge stories, ridiculous costumes. Yeah, beautiful Everybody's hair. coming back to life, beautiful hair. Do you get to play a badass in any of these? Uh, yeah, I played a serial killer two years ago. I played a comic who was a serial killer. Damn. Whoa. And just like a shitty comic who needed to strangle someone right before he went on stage to get the juice to, uh, <laughs> to kind of go on. But then he goes viral and he gets a weekly show, so now he has to strangle somebody every week. <laughs> so bodies start piling up around this film set. And nobody can figure out that it's the lead guy. Oh. A comic who goes viral. How do you pre- prepare for this that happened right? in your life? This <laughs> yeah, is crazy. Well, we had a serial killer comic, didn't we? Bud Champ. Really? Yeah. I think he was a, a rapist. Dude. I don't think he was a killer. Oh, I thought he killed people. Did Never he? mind. But he was, they found him because of his tour dates. They noticed like somebody was getting fucked over in every city. Oh, this is like his Andrew Tate pizza box. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, was, yeah. uh, he's, he's in Romanian prison right now, right? Is that right? I was think. he not out? I, I would imagine I he, thought he got out. No, he's still in. A he's and... still in. What? Yeah. He Damn. is. The thing is, like, he is a kickboxer. He's probably holding his own in there. Oh, yeah. And that uh, comic was not a serial killer, but a serial rapist. Okay, uh-huh. sorry. And he got caught because the women's stories started coming together because after he would rape a woman, he would say, pray for me. And then they would oh. pray for him. There was he a had a catchphrase. <laughs> That was Comedy his good or done. As, as opposed to, <laughs> what color is your Bukhari? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, but... Damn, uh, he was a clean comic, too, I think. They're always clean. Yeah. Clean yeah. guys. Cosby, Nate yeah. Bargatze. Oh. Just saying. No, <laughs> wow. <laughs> we love you, Nate. Regan. Uh, uh, Gaffigan. No. <laughs> no, they're all... Seinfeld they're all fucked me in the ass. You know, he that fucked Johnny Carson. Yeah. <laughs> What's the deal with buttholes? Sorry. Wait. Yeah. I cut you off there. No, I was just saying Johnny Carson. But. Oh yeah, he was apparently a big, uh, big oh, was asshole. He? Oh yeah, a lot of a lot of hitting the ladies. Really? A lot of throwing like whiskey whiskey glasses at allegedly. staff. Allegedly. Allegedly. Yeah. Allegedly. I, I just heard he was dead. hung. Allegedly. Really? Allegedly. really? That's the rumor. Yeah, the it's weird that a guy from Mumbai across the universe knows about Johnny Carson's his dick, massive but, dong. Yeah. All right. Epstein was hung too, but. Mm-hmm. No, he wasn't. Uh, in prison. Oh, in, in well, cell. I'm an yeah, idiot. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> no, because the, the whole doc, they're like, he's got an egg-shaped penis. That's right. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. Him Which, and Harvey. Look, we got a bulge. Now go. that eggs are harder to get, is an egg-shaped penis a little more attractive? <laughs> I don't know what an egg-shaped penis is. I'm just imagining foreskin. <laughs> like, isn't that... <laughs> yeah, a lot of foreskin. Yeah. Very thick. Um, but yeah, the Bollywood guys. Man, the hair. Indians got the hair. We have the hair. Whitey, I thought, had hair on lock, and then... Bollywood came along and you guys took the, the But trophy. isn't it a trade-off to just have hair later in your life as well? Like, I'd rather sure. have it... I'd rather have hair longer everywhere in my body for the rest of my life yeah. uh, than kind of lose it early and then not have it on my head later Of course. On. But you guys should have a hairy off. Cause, uh, Are you a really hairy guy? I, you I, got those I, Robin Williams forearms yeah, I see right I, there. God's been kind, though. I have forearms and legs, but like chest and junk... Is okay. Let's go, boys. Lift him up. Uh, That's weird. Uh, no, no, I don't want. That's it. not no. a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a hairy guy. Oh yeah, it's coming what, out what, of the. Uh, what the do top. you? Uh, oh do, yeah. Do you do things about it, or are you? I complain. Yeah, but are you? You're not going like man waxing no. or something like that. Come on. Who has the time? I've done that for a movie. I've oh, really? really? The, the full body. I did it for a movie too. It was on YouTube. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> no, I had a girl make me shave my chest. 
uh, in like college, and I was like, oh, that's yeah, she wants it shaved. I'll do that. And then I, like later, I was like, I felt like violated. Yeah, that she did that. And to also me. when the stubble comes out and yeah. just everything itches, and then <laughs> she's red because you're lying down on top of her and basically exfoliating her. Is, I hope uh, that's why she's red. Yeah, you're a Jufa. <laughs> yeah, Jewish loofah. All right, but, uh, <laughs> that was a stretch. <laughs> yeah, my dad was super hairy, and he shaved his chest one day, and I lost all respect for him. Damn, it, like hurt our relationship. Yeah, because he was less of a man. I think as a kid, I I couldn't look up. Yeah, you to just him think well. like, would fucking Bogey ever do that? Would Humphrey no Bogart shave his chest? No. What about pubes? Where are you guys at on the uh, trim? A trim. I trim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like to do it on the road too. So do I. Let it be their problem. Yes, put that. But pube then, what's everywhere. your disposal thing? Are you kind of just leaving it in the shower? Or no, you... no, I do it over the toilet. I try yeah. to make as little mess as possible. I try and to... it never works, right? No, yes. it's always like. There's a sprinkle. There's always stray stuff yeah. somewhere or the other in the bathroom. And why is there always a pube at the urinal? I know I sounded like always? Seinfeld there. But there's, a, there's always a pube at every urinal. I go to the airport, there's like six And what's pubes. with these glory holes? <laughs> I, the I walls just, are so thick. I leave them in case I get lost. And then ah. <laughs> your your breadcrumbs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm off It's a nice bread. midday beer. Yeah, it's right? a little warm though, huh? What's going on here? Have you guys had a kid <laughs> in yet? What? A Guinness Black. We don't care for them. All right. No. <laughs> um, no, a Guinness Black is, is a Guinness, but with black currant syrup. Whoa. So the entire, oh. the entire thing becomes purple, and it's like a sweet Guinness. Ooh. It's really? Tremendous. Well, we got to get that on the list. I've never heard of it. Yeah. What's, what's the one, black and tan? What is that? That's uh, whiskey and Guinness or something. No, I think it's Yingling and Guinness, isn't it? Then there's a Stormy Daniels. No, Dark and Stormy. Oh, yeah. That's rum, though, I think. That's rum. Well, what's in, uh, the, what is that? Guinness what do you and got what? There, Sally? Cider. Cider. Yeah. Don't you guys have your? Oh, that's your your whiskey, right? Oh yeah. Our whiskey, bodegacatwhiskey.com. I, I launched a beer this year. Oh yeah. Did you? Yeah. It's called Fuck It. I like it. Is it really called Fuck It? <laughs> yeah, so, how do you spell it? Uh, F A A A A K I T. Oh, there nice. That's how I got around the thing. But the idea is, you had a good day, fuck it. You had a bad day, fuck it. That's good. I like that. Right. Is it an Indian pale ale? Uh, no. It ah. is. Uh, like I, I was like. Beer alienates women and young adults, and just there's this sort of macho beer culture. Yeah, and I want a beer that's halfway between beer and cider, so it's not sweet, but it's kind of like a drink it at 11 a.m. Don't get fucked up kind of a beer. Right, right. So it's called the happy beer, and it's just called fuck it. Yeah, get it online. I respect the people that go, will just get my, loaded uh, on the flight. That's my beer. Good for you, man. You're you're hustling, right? This is great. Said the two guys with the studio and a whiskey in front of them. Wow. <laughs> hey, we're, we're overseas, though. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to, it's going to get there. BodegaCatWhiskey.com, but it's coming, man. It's kind of, we're, this is a hustle, but, you know. And we got merch now. It's, oh, it's, yeah. People are loving the Bodega Cat Whiskey merch. We're I've cooking. I've tried so hard to be a guy who can handle or, like, have a palate for whiskey. And I think, like, my dad is a single malt guy. And then I just had a single malt and coke once in front of him, and he was just like, "Fuck off! You're never touching my whiskey ever again." Wow, yeah, that's a that's a bad move. Because I did like a Lagavulin twenty six oh, or something oh, with like Pepsi stuff. or something like that. Ah, oh my god, like, no, <laughs> yeah, that's br- yeah. They get mad Lagavulin. People get mad if you put an ice cube in there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll do it like one cube sometimes because I like it a little chill. But uh, yeah, let alone tab or whatever <laughs> the fuck you're putting in there. Do you guys have an RC cola and uh, Glen Meringue? Have you guys done the the factory tour ever? Like one of these, because you go to Scotland and they take you around, right, to these these whiskey places. Yeah, it's the like distilleries. A, yeah, I did the uh, I did the Heineken Brewery in Amsterdam. What a racket! Yeah, don't really? ever go. Oh my god, it was so cheesy and touristy. And, Why? Well, they they it's the original brewery. It's like right on the canal, so it looks cool. Then you go in, they hand you a beer, and they're like, "These are malts. This is hops. See you later." That's, That's it? it. Yeah, it's like so shitty. It's forty bucks. Don't go. Big that waste. feels like the Hershey's store in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I went to that. Which I've, which I've done, which is another fucking racket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because Hershey's, I'm sorry, America, not great chocolate. You know, hey, don't you dare besmirch the good Come Hershey's on. people. I'm just saying, you know, compare Hershey's <laughs> to like Lindt. Or Belgian chocolate, sure. or German chocolate, Lent. or really any chocolate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's okay. I had a good All time right. there. I never did that tour. You know, it's underrated. The Pez Pez Museum is unbelievable. Really? Yeah. Why? Yeah. It was just great. It was just so well done, and it's a cool layout, and they got all the old Pez from the 20s and the 30s. 
Really fun. I, I maybe I didn't. It, it's always about where you were in the road, and I was in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So I was like, "Oh, this is great." <laughs> yeah, right. It's better than the shows I'm doing in the fucking motel. Yeah, I was literally like in the shittiest. I was like oogling a La, La Quinta across the street. Like I would kill to be there <laughs> in this dump, just bombing with Anthony Devito. Yeah, just crying, eating a Hershey <laughs> in bed. I was in Amsterdam, and uh, I was on tour, and the girl I was with, we had space cakes. Oh yeah, uh, and the, the guy at the counter was like, "Just have one," and I'm like, "Fuck this!" We bought like two each and had two space cakes each, and we were staying at the Amstel Hotel on the Amstel River. We walked up and down the river for four hours looking for the river. Whoa! Uh, just finding people like, "Have you seen the Amstel River?" And they're like, "It's right fucking behind you." <laughs> and then we got kicked out of the Museum of Medieval Torture. I went and to that too, right? Just because we were taking photos like in the guillotine. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Just like fuck off. So we got that kicked was, out of that. That wasn't a bad museum. You know, none of that shit is real, by the way. What? They build all of that stuff. Like there's 17 of those museums. It's like a Madame Tussauds. Like they they manufacture the guillotine, the guillotine, and just age uh, it up to look old. You know, same thing with the Holocaust Museum. It's not yeah. real. It's not <laughs> crazy. It's like I went in. I was like, I thought this was a. There's a guy called Alex Jones at the start. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Kanye will be your tour guy. <laughs> I love the five people who are like, was that a joke? Is that? Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's uh, you've been here for a while though. It's like, uh, what cities are you liking versus not liking? Mm. I like uh, okay, my favorite club. We were talking about this, but is Zany's Nashville? Yeah, Interesting. I was there today. Strong Indian population, which I yeah. need. Yeah, right? and you need your safety net. But then there's enough comedy fans who'll be like, okay, if he's at Zany's, he's probably good, and we'll go and see whoever the guy is. Right. So I like that. And you have jokes, so even yeah. if a random honky goes in there, you're yeah. still gonna laugh. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> there was a couple things I didn't understand on the India thing, but that's literally an India speech. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, I'm not at Zany's La Nashville giving profound speeches. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be uh, a great evening. It's too India, some kind of cowboy hats. Like, I don't, I don't know. Chicken wings. <laughs> Buy my beer koozie at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No. You guys uh, like cows, right? <laughs> um, I love Chicago. Chicago love is, I Chicago. Think, a great comedy town. And I think second best comedy town in, in the country. Really? New York, number one. Yeah, I mean, I did yeah. take my last special there. I love Chicago. And then, yeah, New York, the cellar. You know, and, and then any, I just, the special was its curveball, but I've done oh. like town hall a bunch of times. It's it's a good crowd. How do you feel when you first start working the cellar? Was, was, is the cellar known to Indian comics? No, it's known to like comedy fans. Yeah. Right? But for me, it's, I mean, I, I want to get better at tennis by playing tennis with people who are better than me, you know? So for me, the cellar is where the best comics are. And it took a while, I'm not going to lie. Like, it, you know, when I first started working at the cellar and putting it out, there'd just be a lot of Indian people, right? And yeah. a lot of the comics are like, well, it's, it's a lot of brown people in the audience tonight. Uh, and you kind of That went. was Kevin Brennan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you kind of, you know, you, you build your cred a little bit. Yeah. Hell yeah. You know? Uh, that's the, the thing. Oh, sorry, that's the thing about New York. Is I think you need the comics to like you first, and then the industry catches on. I think I, it happened because I followed Chris Rock. Oh uh, yeah, in McDougal Street. I was in the basement, and Liz was there, and uh, he. Had, we were all bumped, and I just kind of watched his new hour, and then she was like, "Veer, they didn't drop the check yet, so go, ah. up, go up and do five. And so I went up and did five. Uh, and until then, I was guy from India who sells Indian tickets. And then I, I followed and I followed strong. You know, I yeah. did about five. And then that can be a good spot. It people, can be. It's a great spot, by you, the way. People you, shit on it, but the crowd is so yeah. zoned in when you go up. And also, they're playing with house money. If they're from out of town, yeah. they just yeah. saw Chris Rock. Yeah. Let's give the next guy a shot. And yeah. you're the underdog, so you get to go up and go, guys, yeah, I'm, and, I'm trying here. And if you address it, then the crowd yes. is immediately on your side as well. So exactly. I followed, and then I think she made me do it like three nights in a row or some shit ah. like that. So, so that was fun too. But did, then, you know, I was at the comics table, I think, from that point on. Did Chris watch at all? No, I think ah. he was out of it. He's out, but his new stuff is great. It's I mean, great. He's, yeah, you know? he's, he's got some killer new. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he does about the Oscars. I haven't seen it yet. But I've seen I, I it. Cannot wait. It's yeah? pretty great. Yeah, he keeps it silly, which is fun because nice. you can tell he's angry about it, but it's very playful. That's well done. Need, sometimes you need that distance, and and I mean, he's one of the best at taking serious shit. Oh yeah, and making it silly and fun. You know, dude, he's doing it live, which is yeah. What's that about? It's such a good idea. You think so? I think Regan so. did it on Comedy Central a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, Comedy Central. I mean, you, well, it'll, it'll be a strong saying. live show, but like. I've been talking about this a lot as well. Like I, I think 
a stand up special is very different from a live show in that i think a special is a piece of cinema mm i really do cuz you know i've been waiting forever to have a box on netflix that is the same size as martin scorsese's box right you know and the only thing i'm competing for is attention so i do think a special now has to be filmic and have like a three act structure and and have silliness and discomfort and and a bunch of stuff in it as well mm-hmm. and so to see him do that without any safety net of editing mm. or going back or retrospect etc like he'll have to pre orchestrate that show Qu- what I- if will smith is in the crowd for the show <laughs> <laughs> just rushes the stage he's like you fuck this up that'd be a great closer <laughs> bring it all around but i think you'll be able to do it i really yeah. do i think so too yeah yeah i mean if anyone can do it it's him and uh you know he's been doing it for so long you yeah. know but I once heard him say at the seller table, uh, a new special needs a new feature. You know, it should be like an iPhone. It should have a new feature, and that's. Mm, so I think he, I think he looks at specials like something new should be structurally should yeah. also be. He always says that that's not a special. That's a normal. So he's always trying to do some weird thing. But sometimes those can go too far. Like I didn't think the Johannesburg thing was that. I would have rather just seen a, a special throughout. Uh, yeah, I felt like it gave away the trick a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the but three but it, the material is still great. But it's just yeah. yeah, it's not my of his work. It's not my favorite. Same. Well, I, I mean, this special. I know what you're saying in terms of a new feature. Like I saw a clip from the Prestige. Remember that Nolan movie? Yeah. Right. It was cool. like yeah. a, a two and a half minute clip, right? And it's where Michael Caine is talking about this. uh the pledge and the turn and the prestige and to get from the turn to the prestige you need misdirection mm. so like on that's what i base this entire special on whoa where i'm like i'm going to arrive and i'm going to you're going to see some sand and i'm going to pour it on and you're not going to know what that is and that's my pledge and then at some point i'll keep showing you cuts of shoes that you don't understand like random shots mm. of shoes which is misdirection And then at the end of the special, they reveal that it's all Indian sand. Yeah. That I'm standing on Indian soil. So you can make fun of India. So so I can yeah. make fun of oh. India. So, so in the special, whenever I'm making fun of America, I'm on American soil, and India is Indian soil. But I don't reveal it until like minute fifty five. Well, she sure you want to say it here? Yeah, it's fine. It's been out long no, enough. Oh, okay, okay. But what we'll about? Call it Sandy Hook. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that real? <laughs> According to the museum, no. Uh, uh, Remember when people said that there were crisis actors? That was Alex oh, Jones, yeah. and he was like, "Yeah, the cri- like, does that mean there's crisis actor agents?" Uh, dude, I <laughs> she, she was in Pulse nightclub shooting. This is a star right here. This is <laughs> I've been dying to make this movie. I, I met a uh, a Mossad guy in Singapore, mm. and he was telling me that when Mossad conducted assassinations, they would um, they would hire actors, and within like a one kilometer radius. they would write scripts for every one of their actors so if it's just like man and woman walking down the street with a baby they'd write down an entire scene for them whoa and so they'd hire film script writers to write scripts for the crowd during an assassination Dude, wow. people in the like, crowd that's a fucking movie that's right? like truman show right that's a crazy. failed script writer gets hired yeah. by <laughs> mossad or something to like script assassinations that's wow. a great movie do those people know they're in an assassination are they yeah, also they mossad or are they just like they hire actors they hire actors Damn, and those so are good actors. They'll populate the entire area with actors who are basically doing lines. Wow. Damn. I mean, that's below gay porn even, <laughs> you know. Like you got to really be struggling as an actor to take that gig. Because you know, as scripted content goes, gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know though, you can at least show your parents a tape of this. Ah, good point. Good yeah, point. You know? <laughs> It's on the news. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, does India I mean, this is this ignorant question, yeah. but do you you know you see the Bollywood, it's very broad, it's yeah. very big, music, dancing. Are there like Indian Saving Private Ryan? Oh yeah. Okay. The, the bulk of Indian movies are not the big Bollywood spectacles, ah. you know. I think that's what gets noted. Like the only two Indian things that get noticed over here are sort of big spectacle stuff and then just sort of struggle movies, yes, right? Yes, uh, yes. So Lion and Slum, they pertails in all of them. Uh <laughs> and, and those movies get noticed over here, but a movies na- like that well received in India as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh you know, because you 99% of India is a flourishing modern successful country that wants a seat at the table, you know? And so like 90, 99% of movies talk about that, but you don't really see that so much. Interesting. Over here. And then you have like I don't know if you ever get a chance please watch the trailer of a movie called Basmati Blues which exemplifies wreck. everything it's a wreck it's, it's where Brie Larson 
Oh. One of my favorite Indian actresses. Right. Uh, She's wonderful. Uh, a white lady comes down to India and teaches us how to make rice. Which oh, is... no. We're doing that so now. So is it good? Actually good or it's no, shit? No, it's terrible. Okay. All right. Oh, bad. that's embarrassing. What What about... Uh, so the, there's part of your special where you... See, oh, yeah. Hold on. Let's watch this first. Let's see. Oh, I like Donald Sutherland, though. Yeah. Oh, boy. You know, she was so excited for this role. I'm going to be a hero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, no. <laughs> Dysentery. The sequel in North Korea was even worse. <laughs> I don't even like leaving my own neighborhood. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Sorry. Even the crisis actors turned this one down. <laughs> ah, this is this You've is. got to put a Juno soundtrack yeah. in, a, in yeah. an Indian movie, right? Oof. Oh, we got the cool, hot Indian guy. Yeah. There's gonna be some uh, interracial love here. Ah, uh, this is this is grossing me out. I can't yeah. watch. This is too cheesy. <laughs> I like the guy who can't get it up. He's like, sorry. <laughs> Our next partner is Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens was the morning booster I needed. Just scoop, shake, and have alongside your morning coffee or OJ. It's like taking the shelf of multi multivitamins in one drink. I love this stuff. Uh, I had some today. You know, we're too. on the road. Me you too. did? I did. It's it's actually I, tastes I, pretty good. I need that immunity, baby. Yes, we're on the road. We're eating Panda Express and pussy. It's horrible diet. You need the greens. We're not getting enough vegetables, so it's a perfect substitute. You just shove that right up your ass. It tastes solid. It's real. And uh, I love it. Packed with over 75 vitamins and minerals for a major boost right to the gut. It helps the mood, the energy, even skin, hair, and nails. It's the healthiest thing you can do in under a minute. I'll tell that to my wife. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash drunk. That's athleticgreens.com slash drunk and check it out. Nothing makes you sound smarter than learning a new language. Babbel is a language learning app with easy bite-sized language lessons. Uh, I mean, this is, we all want to learn another language. We've had people like Veer Dawes on here who sound cultured as hell. Oh, yeah. It's always nice to know another language. You go to another place, you don't have to go, speaky American, <laughs> which is what I do currently. So get on Babbel. You know, lessons take as little as 10 minutes a day, so you start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks. Choose from 14 different languages with lessons voiced by real native speakers, not computers. With Babbel, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes to help you on your way. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash drunk. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash drunk for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel. Language for life. Ooh, baby. There we go. All right, that was a squeaker. <laughs> yeah. The look uh, of love <laughs> is dude. up your well, butt. Yes. <laughs> All right, save time and have the energy you need to tackle everything on your to-do list with Factors ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor shops, preps, cooks, and delivers to your door so you can enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian approved minus the hassle. They sent me a bunch of these things. They taste great. There's all kinds of different flavors, fish, steak, chicken with veggies and sides. I loved it. And they give you these smoothies, too. You just get a big assortment of fruit smoothies. You got the greens. You got the berry. You got the veggie. With calorie smart and keto options, factor meals are perfectly portioned to keep you on track with your goals. With over 34 meals per week and over three dozen add-on options, each factor meal arrives pre-prepared by their chefs. Come on, ready to heat and eat in two minutes. Head to factormeals.com slash drunk60 and use code drunk60 to get 60% off your first box. That's a lot. That's code Drunk60 at factormeals.com slash drunk60 to get 60% off 
Your first box. Factor, get on it. <laughs> okay. What, That's uh, Indian garb. So you're talking about, uh, in the special, you're talking about, there's a line you have where you say, uh, you know, hate is is yell, but love, love is, is felt. felt. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I mean, that's like, that was kind of a profound line, you know I mean? Because you've dealt with so much shit. Yeah. And you talk about feeling suicidal in this nice hotel because you, yeah. you're nominated for an Emmy the same night that you're yeah. called a terrorist. Yeah. Oh. Mixed feelings. Yeah, mixed feelings. Rough yeah. night. Rough <laughs> yeah. night. Bittersweet. But I yeah. tried to do a suicide bit that kind of got to the laugh really quick yeah. and like didn't indulge. But were, were you really that low? Or it was yeah, in, man, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, oh, suicidal comedian, you're really special. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. So what I will say is that aside, any day you get to tell people your problems on Netflix is a pretty good goddamn day. Yeah. Life's all right, right? Good yeah. point. Uh, but I think that's part of it as well, that if you... Uh, hate is always going to be louder and it's always going to trend and it's always going to be number one and, and it's very easy to assume that that's all the feedback coming at you. Yeah. And, and that's what now paints you. Right. And then you discover that most people are sensible and want to pay their bills and go to bed at night and will not go out of their way to yell love at you. Yeah. Uh, but then suddenly, eight months later, when you go out on tour again, they'll come and buy your ticket. And, they, mm. and they'll come and see you with genuine empathy and, and they'll be fucking awesome about it. Yeah. But you just kind of have to hang out and wait for the light to hit you. Yes. You know, that's a journey. There is a weird, I know it's a quote, but it's a fine line between love and hate. It's so true. If someone hates you that much, they got to care about you. Yeah. A little bit. Because some people are like, what do you, you hate this group? You're like, I don't even think about that group. I don't care about the group enough to hate it. Yeah. You well, know? I always think of that Howard Stern line from Private Parts where they say, they, people that hate you listen uh, for twice as long. Twice as long. Yeah, well, they say, people that like you listen for an hour and a half. How much do people hate you listen to? Two hours. Right. And they both want to hear what you're going to say next. Yeah. But I, f I find that on either side, you know, uh, large professions of of hate or love say more about the person than they yes. do about the, the person they're talking of about. Of course. Here, here. You know? Oh, yeah. When, I, when someone is writing really hateful shit to me on social media, I'm just like, this is you. This is not yeah. me. Yeah. For me to elicit this... I'm going to guess you're not in therapy. Right. I'm going to guess you're not uh, someone uh, who tapes a yeah. hard look. It's easier to hate outward than to look inward. Totally. And, totally. And, and I also think hate or love, large expressions of it, come from a certain loneliness. You're like yes. sort of going, is anybody else with me on this? And can we be part of a tribe together? We do right. it all the time. You're in the bank and someone's taking forever in line. You, yeah. you, look, you look for someone to make eye contact with to be like, this guy, huh? Yeah. This yeah. fucking ass. <laughs> We're all just looking for the connection. Yeah. yeah. But you also, you ever have a guy say something really mean on Twitter and I'll like it? And they go, ah, I'm sorry, man. I was fucking around. I love you. And you're like, you just crushed me for but a second. But 99 of those guys, if you met them on the street, would be really cool as well. I know. Like, I, I, I'm not arrogant enough to say like I don't read the comments, or it doesn't get to me. It totally gets to me, and oh, I, yeah. I, I will go down a rabbit hole of Same. Uh, yeah. of you know cringe, uh, sort of all the hatred and all of that stuff. I will go down that rabbit hole. I regret writing those, but you know. <laughs> but, but also, you talk about the difference, like when when people in America talk about getting canceled yeah. by like a Twitter mob and you're like I'm on the fucking news yeah I mean yeah. that's but but again like who said this like the worst thing that ever happened to you is the worst thing that ever happened to you mm. you know so I wouldn't judge yeah. an American comic I think that was Cosby also right <laughs> yeah like <laughs> why do we keep going from me to Cosby I don't know <laughs> I can't help it but <laughs> he's in the news again I can't I can't uh, stop people are going to that tour that's like selling out is it you better bring a pillow and yeah. a butt plug to that one but like, is he going to talk? I've talked to a bunch of black sure comics. So like he's going to talk about it. So he's he's going to be on stage. Like so, the first bitch testified. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I've like, been this is away. Be weird. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Just downtime. Um, but no, I don't judge anybody harshly for that. It's a joke, right? Where yeah. it's cute uh, that you complain about cancel culture or sort of a. I do think the oh, can I say this or can I not say this bit that all comics we're now doing yeah. uh, it's that's going to outrun its time agree yeah. you just know? say it also just you're say saying it. it yeah you are and, and also yeah. I, I think I don't know where the line is and thinking about it is going to drive me insane so yes. how about I'll do the joke and you let me know where the line is yeah. Yeah. the audience and, and then you, and and then you did the two India speech and you're like that was the line yeah, that was I the think. line <laughs> there you go but no I'll, I'll work with you from that point on like, yeah. I'm not uh, any feedback is good feedback Agreed. at some level as long as it doesn't translate into hate or threats 
is good feedback. If people can actually have it, the problem with the Twitter and the stuff like that is there's no nuance and there's no attempt at a dialogue. Yeah. No. When there's actually a conversation to be had, then it's actually, it can be enlightening and, yeah. and interesting. And, Not you know. cancel culture, council culture. Ooh. <laughs> but I agree. You are jet lag. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to say when someone gives you feedback after yeah. a show. I should have confetti. Uh, but you're right about showing the audience shows you where the line is, and that's all good and well. But let me learn where the line is, and then don't ruin me for trying to find where the line is. Yeah, that's yeah. my thing. I think artists deserve the opportunity to be imperfect without systems coming crashing yes. down on them for merely imperfect artists. And for you, it built your audience. It I did. mean, it made you. Right. You went through this, you know kind of traumatic thing that now you are playing bigger venues I am no, and, and also it's, it's a weird thing right because you're not gonna come out on stage because now people are coming out to see you with a slightly more emotional connection mm. they are and they're invested in your story so you you cheat them if you don't talk about it as well sure it's the, the, the first thing they're thinking when they see you is I know what you've gone through I was kind of with you on it so you do have to talk about it but my rule was very simply the first word I say about it has to be fucking funny. I love that. You know, that's great. Otherwise, I'm not a comic. Yes. You know? yeah. Here, here. I'll tell some of the comics working today that, will you? <laughs> you Jesus know. Christ. We get it. You were molested. No, let's talk about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> one, of my, one of my least favorite one-man shows, by the way. <laughs> you were molested. <laughs> that's the other thing I was, I was talking about with somebody is, you know, comedy is now... I think comedians are learning to play the camera a little bit. Sure. You know, because like a special is like here, you know, it's not a big theatrical show. So sometimes you see a special where a comic is talking about something very intimate, but he's like, my dad died, right? Right. He's, he's trying to reach like the, the third layer of the audience, but the, the camera's right there. Right, right. So I think we're learning now to just kind of be like, my dad died, you know, yeah. and keep it in. But I also think breaking through, like you're... T- to India's broke. That kind of what broke you, and that's pretty standard. Like, well, you've Bill done Burr. specials before that. I mean, yeah, you did, but 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 this, I mean, but this, this took this it to hit. another level. But yeah. more than any of this stuff, it's like you can't predict stuff. I, no. D- during the pandemic, I was depressed and wanted to do stand up, so I ended up, um, like grabbing a speaker and a microphone and and climbing up a hill to a forest mm. near my house in Goa, and thirty five people would come out and we'd sit in the sunlight and do stand up at three PM. Yeah. With a PA that I set up myself. Yeah. And I did five YouTube videos about the world as such. So they were about uh cancel culture, freedom of speech, privilege in the West, comedy versus religion and death. Mm. Right. And and the idea was can I create five or ten pieces of comedy that are, you know, about the world. Those five videos moved the needle more than like really? three Netflix specials put together. So, so you, there's no know. predicting yeah. what no. people. You know, also, was, people needed content too. Yeah. Like I did a few videos in Central Park. I'm bombing under a tree with seven people, you know, sitting on the grass, and that one did well too. Yeah. Because it was just like, this is what they're going through. Man, these guys are diehards. Yeah. I think it showed people how much we need it. Well, a lot of people dropped off during the pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it got rid of riddance. some of those people <laughs> that weren't going. <laughs> That weren't willing to do anything like that. Yeah. So, right. You know, that is so you're a real good. comic. But, but the point is, you you just don't know. You no. can shoot the most expensive special in the world. You can, you, and then. Suddenly, Which you don't need to do, by the you way. You don't need to do when, no. I hear, when certain comics were telling me how much they spent on a special, I was like, you do realize that all you really need is you and the mic. Yeah. yeah. We don't need a fucking swinging shot from a chandelier, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a bit much. <laughs> Work on the act more yeah. than the yeah. production. What yeah. about. How scared were you when you were home? I mean, how. how not so much. I, I, really? I think we had a. Uh, it's not my first rodeo, you know. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, uh, I've been doing this a while, and also I think you, when you have a, you know, God's been kind, so you have a larger audience. You, you, it's par for the course. So I was scared, but I was more scared for a family that hadn't signed up for this. You know, like yeah. my wife. Mm. I'm like, I want to make sure they're yeah, okay. That's tough. You know, I'm very privileged, so I have a good legal team. I, you know, we'll be okay. In yeah. that sense. But what, what did your wife say when this happened? Did no. you run the speech by her before? Yeah, my wife heard it at like 4 p.m. Because I, I literally lo- wrote it at 4 p.m. And then we found a wedding photographer who was unemployed on a Sunday and he shot it. Whoa. But my wife, Good job, Salacuse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my wife, I was like, should I do this? And she's like, yeah. That's look, a good wife. Happen? <laughs> right? I love that. And she's been a trooper, man. It's Just, not been an easy nine months, but yeah. she's, uh, yeah. you know. 
we've hung in there. It's but it makes great. you hotter. It's like huh? sexier. You're, you're like a like no, a no, 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 it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> Come on, Indians whip it out. out, whip it out. Sorry, guy lying in bed like I think I fucked up. Uh, <laughs> it's not sexy. I know. No, no. Good point. Good point. You just the hotel. How do you let me do this, you bitch? Uh, <laughs> no, women need safety, security, and some level of masculinity. It's yeah, some, you know. So yeah, for sure. I hear you. Well, I'm working on that last one, but. <laughs> <laughs> but Bill Burr, he did the Philly rant, and he walked off stage, and he goes, "Well, my career's over." And then that's what propelled it. Have you seen that the Bill? Burr? I have, yeah. But again, like I've thought my career is over three times. Oh. you know. So I, I, I once did a, a Bollywood movie that was like a, like an American Pie sex comedy kind of a romp, and it's called Masti Zade, and it's uh, you guys may know her, may not, but her name is Sunny Leone. And mm. she used to be a porn star, and then Ooh. she became a, a Bollywood actress. And it was me and her, and it Pull was it this, up. this gigantic studio movie Damn. Uh, that I was packaged as one of the two leads, and uh, blatantly a movie that everybody did for cash, yep, and would not watch. Ah, you know? and the and the phone stopped ringing for oh. a good year. And that's when what I was like America. the peak gross out <laughs> huh? scene? You said it's like an American pie. They fuck a pie. I'm guessing you didn't fuck a samosa. So like, what's the, <laughs> what's the, what's like the gross out scene in the I think movie? I humped a horse. <laughs> really? Oh. You you humped I a horse? I, humped, I think I humped a horse. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So yes, it's just me wow. and uh, a guy behind me, and he's kind of humping me while I hump a horse. Uh, and <laughs> the tail so is like. Sp- <laughs> flapping me in the face and I was like yeah I went to drama school uh, <laughs> I don't know you're kind of selling it you're, you're kind of selling it I can it. sell this I'd like so to watch I this I kind of want to see it we have a movie called Horse it's very different where a guy humps a horse <laughs> no that's not the one don't click that <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I I, so no and Freddie got fingered he jerks off an elephant doesn't he that's right and a horse and a horse but uh, Mastiz Adet uh, M-A-S-T-I-Z-A-A-D-E but the point is like at, at that moment in time you're like yeah I deserve this. It's going to be a dip and then hopefully in a year I'll find it and we'll come back. Like you it, you got to find these kind of ebbs and flows. Yeah, did you read your wife that script at 4 p.m.? No, 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 I did not. No. <laughs> okay. No. But uh, what was the porn star like? She was amazing. Really? She, she's intelligent, BJ? funny, fucking amazing. All right. Yeah. Mastizad. Yeah, we shouldn't dwell on this. <laughs> all right, all right, we'll move on. But it's fucked up. They call you musty. Yeah. But, oh, come on. Wow, look how big this is. It's so... Uh, it's magnanimous, right? Yeah. There we go. Guys, I'm going to throw up. Uh, all right, all right, all right. No, I want to see a little. <laughs> it does definitely have that American Pie National right? Lampoon vibe. Go. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> it's like a Harold and oh, Kumar. This looks kind of fun. It's Kumar, it is. Kumar. It's a fun movie. Oh, it's just terrible. Yeah, you're telling me. But I, I'd watch this in a hotel room on a Friday <laughs> before a gig. Both of you on tour this weekend. Yes. <laughs> Fuck the special. Yeah. I'm watching this. Wow. All this right. Well, good for you. You got to take a swing, you know? There you go. Yeah, yeah, man. So, I mean, that's how do you make the decision to be like, I'm going to tour in America? Uh, Mastis are they actually? <laughs> like, really? the phone stopped ringing. And then I met these guys who were down from an American agency and they kind of found a clip of mine. And they're like, we want to sign you. So come to LA and take meetings, which yep. means give money to Uber and uh, <laughs> <laughs> get free water. <laughs> and, and I showed up and I, like I ha- I'd been neglecting stand up. I, I want to say for like seven years or eight years. Jesus. Wow. I just wasn't How long have you been doing stand up? Uh, this is year 16. Okay. Oh, that's, that's and, substantial. And uh, I went to the Laugh Factory and I had an eight minute spot and I think I followed Whitney mm. and she killed hard. I followed strong and I just kind of fell in love with it again, man. I was like, I feel more fulfilled by this than I have in the last five movies. And I'm like, I'm just going to start working America. So I had them send me out. So I spent a year traveling America mm-hmm. just kind of see what stand up was doing. So people in India so are just like, why are you in a day's in? Uh, and where is yeah, Arlington like what clubs, what kind, of, what kind of cities were you hitting? Were you doing weekends? Yeah, I was doing like Charlottesville, Huntsville, Whoa. Alabama. Uh, you know, just doing the road. Stand up live in Huntsville? Yeah, and like improvs. I was with Levity, so so improvs were largely where I was playing. Nice. I did Carolines a bunch of times. Yeah. And just kind of. R.I.P. Carolines, we love you. Yeah, man. Uh, Damn. There's, there's Indians around. 
Yeah, man. Because uh, Huntsville has NASA, so yeah, you need smart people. So I just kind I needed to learn what stand up was again. <laughs> yeah, but it's the best. It's you know a lot of it sucks that it's the gutter of show business. You know, like these old actors are like, I'm out of money. I'll go tell some stories on stage about those 80s movies I was in. Is Are there a lot of actors doing stand-up? Oh, I feel yeah. like it's kind of the lowest pit, but like yeah. you can make money at this. So they're like, oh, their agents are like, you should do stand-up. Because oh, you can sell the tickets. You oh, I thought agree. when you, there's a point in your special where you're like, you know, you're going through all this bullshit and you're, it was your lawyers, your agents were like, money! And you're yeah. like, my life, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's like, I, I remember doing a gig years ago. Uh, it was at the Mall of America in uh, Minneapolis, in Minneapolis, and it was a fallout week. And I was like, I needed work, but also like, you know, I was I was working every week, but like I had an open weekend. They're like, someone just dropped out this weekend in Mall of America, in Minneapolis. It's yours. You should do it. And uh, I was Papered like, the room. same the same Mall of America that Al Shabab just threatened to shoot up this week. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's why I dropped out. They're like, we haven't heard about that. I was like, go to CNN.com. It's <laughs> the first thing they're talking about. <laughs> uh, those are actors. <laughs> <laughs> well, I text Joe List. He goes, if you take it and get murdered, you're officially the dumbest fuck on the planet. Ah, uh, yeah, shit. But you took it. I didn't. Oh, you didn't take I it. I didn't. I was like, I'll just do sellers. I had seller spots. I was like, I'll just do the next. Oh, okay. I've never played that room. Yeah, it's not. It's huge. I think my low was uh, TV shopping. Oh, I've done the TV worst. shopping at some point, and you would be surprised how much money it is. Like it's a lot of money. So you do it because you have no money. Yeah. And then it is literally nine times what you think you're going to get paid. So I get why people started and then stay. But it was yeah. literally like, how much do you think this plasma TV costs? Like, send us a message now and we'll give you a deal. I was that guy for a good Wait, two months. Oh, I thought you meant shop on a show. No. You're like, literally selling TVs. Yeah, man. What? Like, TVs, mixers, uh, necklaces, like just, you know, you have a shopping channel, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I was that guy. Wow. How, how, how many years into stand-up was this? This was maybe Pull it up. four years into a Bollywood career. Uh, but so. they probably paid you well to do this stuff? Yeah, man. It's, it's a ton of money. Wow. Yeah. And they just feel like, we like this guy. He's got this cool TV. We'll buy the TV. That's their logic? No, I mean, the, the, the guys who produce it is like, no, his career just died. You should hire him. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they give you enough to stay. Yeah. Well, you have a good attitude. I mean, you know, it's... Uh, you, it's like us hosting a game show, yeah. probably. Something like that. I Although could never host... A, like, I've been told any time I've ever hosted anything, I come off as sarcastic. Ah, uh, yeah, same. Like, I'll do a corporate gig once in a while where I have to MC, and it's a ton of money, but then I'm just like, please welcome. Right, you know, hey, right. Like, please, could you... That's how I was when I used to hand out flyers on the street, is people would, uh, they'd be like, this is the fucking level of enthusiasm you have for your show. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd be like, I mean, yeah. I'm out here five hours in the cold. Yeah. What do you want from me? Have you guys done the, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival yet? I turned Guys, it you, down. You have to. Really? Everyone you says must. that. I get some mixed reviews on it. Uh, yeah. no, so it's not, uh, I mean, you will need like a, it depends on what you want. If you want to work out your show, mm -hmm. get your ass whooped, and have an audience teach you something every night, and then watch enough art that pisses you off that it clicks something in your show <laughs> yeah uh, that's a good reason to do it but if you're looking to like succeed or pr and all of that stuff then you need a very narrative based you know kind of a show you have to tell yeah. a story pam you're a pr person do we have to do edinburgh <laughs> thank uh, you right. she said no Big head it's shake. lovely yeah i don't want to do it i i feel like i can get the same workout just doing the road in in and new york in, or in the in the country in it's this country 29 shows in 25 days a one-man show. One show no i'm not sure. Although I do have this great show idea about being molested. There you <laughs> go. It's called uh, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> the Diddler. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I mean, it's beautiful. Daddy there. Diddler. Yeah, Daddy Diddler. Dude, you got to see this show. I loved it. <laughs> oh, really? Like I, I did, I've never done a full run before. I was in a basement, 90 people in the basement. And for the first two weeks, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. And then something happens in the third week where suddenly your whole show changes. Mm. Like, I, I went in with the show that wasn't ready. And it was ready by the time I came out. Because you just, it's every night. It's every night. But then I was watching like nine things a day. Wow. That would make me crazy, though. Yeah. It's too you, much. You know, like, I wasn't watching stand-up. I was watching like every other thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. But like, can you watch stand-up? It's hard. I can. Same. I like it. It's very hard for me to watch stand-up. Well, it's got to be good. You know, it's got to yeah. be like, oh, Neil Brennan's got a special. He's a good writer. I'll watch yeah. that. Yeah. But I'll watch it here and there, but... I, yeah, I don't. I I don't like watching stand up. I like to watch movies. Uh, that's kind of like my yeah. escape because like it's not like what we do. Right. I, I'm also, at the I club can every see night. The, the sauce, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, right, I, I, so right. I, that's true. Uh, but some every once in a while, I'll get 
I'll be I'll see someone new and I'll be like, oh wow, that was awesome. So that that yeah. feeling is really is great when yeah. you discover someone new who you like. But yeah. uh, but isn't yeah. that what's great about this profession that on any given fucking night the the kid with five years in can outdo yes. the guy with 30 years in. It happens. Know? And yeah. we both, we've been on, I've been on both sides of that. Sure. Yeah. You know, where sometimes you're like, I just killed harder than that guy. Then, then the, some new twink blows me off the stage. And I'm like, God. yeah, that's what got Chris Rock so good. You've heard that story. No. He was uh, off SNL. He's kind of fizzling out. He's doing a gig in the road. Martin Lawrence is opening. Okay. Martin Lawrence annihilates, standing ovation. Roof comes off, and Chris Rock comes out there and kind of eats it. And he's yeah. like, "I gotta, I gotta kick it up a notch." We've yeah. all had that guy oh, open yeah. for us. We were like, "Shit!" That's why I bring Gary Veter. Never a problem. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but we uh, we all have had that guy. We were like, "What the?" Sometimes it's a high energy comic. The worst is when they're nothing like you. Yeah. Uh, we're all pretty we're, none of us are high energy yeah. acts and no. when you get someone who's a high energy like a yeller and they've got good material yeah. it's like and they're dirty too. like they're they've dirty, got everything got some gimmicks maybe a music cue a dance number they fall over oh god the I worst hate, of course the first night you're always kind of like ah, oh, he did pretty well second night you're like he's he's really kind of burying me and <laughs> night three you're like give it up for the hack everybody yeah, exactly. give it up for the fucking hack <laughs> on this tour i did a strange thing where i used single songwriters so uh-huh. we, we did like 47 cities in india and i was just like if you're a kid if you're unsigned and if you have over a certain amount of views on YouTube, but like under a certain amount as well, where you truly like need the platform, yeah, show up, you'll play while people are sitting down. So the minute house opens, you're on. I'll give you 25 minutes, but I'll film your shit and I'll send it back to you. Hey, there you go. And uh, like I think six of those guys have gotten signed. Hey, wow. look at so that. So you're helping but, out a lot of young comics. But uh, they were singer songwriters, like folk singers. Oh, and stuff. F- singers. And like you'd be surprised how cool a vibe it sets. Like if you right. can walk into a stand-up show and it's not like some obnoxious DJ shit, but it's just like some, you know, John Mayer vibe. Yeah. Somebody's just playing while you sit down. It's a great vibe. Well, that's Mark and I both used to open for Amy Schumer and she had her brother was in a jazz oh, trio. Right. And yeah. it set such a good vibe. It yeah. was like a very classy thing for people to walk into this major show yeah. with, a, you know, these really good jazz Killer musicians. Killer jazz. Yeah. I filmed Zarna's set at Caroline's and she had someone playing like a traditional Indian instrument. Oh, really? It opened I up love for like her. 15 minutes. That's really cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it did set a cool tone. I the thought about it. I thought about all having... the Indian people were fucking loving it. <laughs> She's a beast, man. Like she opens for me sometimes and, uh, you know, and she comes out and my crowd's really young and everybody's like, oh, Indian auntie. Yeah. And then she says cunt in under 30 seconds and everybody's like, fuck yeah, let's go. Yeah, she's working so hard too. Yeah. She's just grinding and grinding. I love to see that. And she's what, three years in, four years in? Is maybe? she? Yeah. Wow. So... I, I I don't want to misstate. So I think she's under seven years in. Stand-up, oh, for sure. You know, definitely. Which is for, great for her to be at that level. She'll get a sitcom or something. I mean, she's perfect for that. Yeah, I think so. It's coming or Bollywood. Is there no crush it in Bollywood? Sex like. comedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know there is a vacancy now. <laughs> <laughs> Musty's on too. <laughs> Electric. Wait, Burglar. yo, I still might do that movie. <laughs> like, uh, well, dude, even man. Sinatra fucking hit a low point. You got to remember, like before it he happens. did that. That what's that movie he won the Oscar for? The man with Manchurian Golden Chan- Can- No, no, Manchurian Candy? no, the other one, the Burt Lancaster one. Oh. Out of Africa. You, you're very old Hollywood, right? Like that's I your love Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Well, so is Mark. Well, yeah. And so is. Matt, to be honest, I mean Salamanca, but uh, he won the Oscar for it. He dies in it. What's it he's called? A, he's in the military. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a war movie. I know oh, what you're talking uh, about. Manchurian Candidate. No, 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 no. I was watching. Uh, have you guys seen uh, fuck, what, the Offer on Paramount Plus? I no. like about it. the Godfather. I read the book. It's a great. It's called the Leave the Gun, gun take, take the, the Cannoli. cannoli. Yeah. Great book. So just the way they do Sinatra in that is hilarious. Really? Because he was so against the Godfather. Yeah. Right. All the gangsters fucking hated it. Yeah, and the, that. Johnny Fontaine is supposed to be Frank Sinatra. Right, yeah. right. So he kept kind of riling up people so that the movie wouldn't get made. And then they had to go sit down with Sinatra and be like, here's why he's not based on you. Yeah. Then the movie gets made and everybody's like, that's Sinatra. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is it Man with a Golden Arm? Yes? No. No, you've heard Says of he it. Says he won here. Do you won twice? You tell me he won twice? Supporting actor. Sinatra was apparently a big cunt. Like he wouldn't. He was he not divorced. Uh, What's her face over Rosemary's Baby? Mia Farrow. Yeah. He was also like sixty, and she was twenty-one. I'm nah, like, what are you that doing, was a different dude? Time. I, I know, but like, how do you have a conversation? I've heard a great story of him like slapping a sound engineer in a studio 
who apparently was Indian, which is how it got to me. But he was a mix engineer. Ah, uh, the Will Smith. And and Sinatra goes in, does a take, and his he's smoking, and his voice is a little raspy, and he kind of does the entire song in one take. Yeah. And then they're all just like, we need another take. And they send the new guy out to tell Sinatra, you got to do it <laughs> one more time. And he just kind of says, come here. Slaps him across his face and says, "Retakes are for pussies." Whoa! Whoa! Did you hear that story? By uh, the way, Don from Rickles. here to eternity. Oh, That's an idiot. the Sorry. one. How'd I beat you to that, Google bitch? What the fuck? You got a whole laptop there. I was queuing up there. the story here. All right. So you ever hear that Don Rickles story when he said, he'd, uh, "You ever hear that time that Frank Sinatra saved my life?" He said, okay, boys, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's killer. That's great. Damn, Rickles is good. <laughs> Sinatra really was a, just like a weird character. And he know? hated Elvis. Speaking of guys coming up who were younger, Elvis was like the hot new thing. And he was like, what the fuck is this? But he hit, He was like, came up this like, you know, the Hoboken hummingbird, yeah. this like pretty boy. Then he becomes kind of grizzled and cool. And, yeah, uh, and mobby. Did and you guys mobby. see the Elvis movie? Did you like it? I didn't see it. It was I well done. It. Really? Yeah. Just for personal reasons, because I think everybody has a kernel in their life. Like, you know, every artist growing up has that fucking leech that finds you when you're young and you got to shake him off. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I was just watching it for that reason. I'm like, I'm, I've had seven of these guys in my life. Yeah. Totally. I had to like move on. From it was them. an early Bollywood film. Early Bollywood. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the problem with the Elvis movie, the reason I didn't see it, there's too, there's too many biopics. And I there's love too, a biopic. And there's, and there's biopic. too many true crimes right now. Oh, there's a lot of true crimes. The, the biopics, I liked, what's his name? In the, Rami Malek in yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody was incredible, yeah. I thought. But uh, yeah. there's Although so I many of them. I thought they overdid the teeth. I thought so, too. Yeah. Oh, and also the AIDS when he just said, I got it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You might have to be more specific. <laughs> I think you're referencing like Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> I like got it. Poppins or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Elvis movie was cool, but... Uh, it was so stylized. I don't know, but it's it's a cool story. But that's his that's his thing, right? Baz Luhrmann. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moulin yeah, Rouge. Is he good? I, I think, think so. <laughs> but it's, you're right. It's just <laughs> I tough. I can't tell if he's good. Yeah, it's like a lady boy. I'm, I'm like, not going to love Bollywood movies. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, what? <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Baz Luhrmann is a is a lady boy, an yeah, artistic uh, lady boy. Yes, exactly. Like, am I into this? I don't know. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. That's, that's how he is. That's my favorite thing about playing like Thailand is just watching. Old British men holding hands with lady boys, <laughs> walking through the market, not making eye contact with each other. Uh, <laughs> it's really sad. Uh, I gotta go to Thailand. I got. I got. I got. Can we take a quick pee break? Oh come on! I'm dying, dude. I fucking had like four coffees before this. I'll okay. talk shit about you while you go. Oh uh, yeah, right, keep going. All right, all right. Finally. Okay, tell me South Africa. All right, boy, it was unreal. We did Amsterdam first. Did some drugs. By the way, don't do don't do mushrooms in Amsterdam. Yeah. They're called, they're truffles. Okay. So some American jumped off a roof on mushrooms, so they they made them illegal. And I feel like the American uh, might not have needed the mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I know, okay. right? Yeah. So he jumped off, so now they're truffles, and I was like, oh, wow, that sounds fine. It's probably different over here, and I ate them, and it, it was hell. Just yeah. put me in a bad mood, big mistake. So Amsterdam was kind of a bust, but then we flew right to Cape Town and had a fucking blast. It is supposed to be magnetically the best energy place in the planet is that right yeah like people say like just magnetic energy in cape town you will feel better than you feel anywhere in the world totally well Amsterdam was rainy and cold we went to cape town it was sunny and 80 degrees and uh you know i love segregation yeah. it was great no i'm joking but <laughs> it was uh super fun i mean the poverty there is bananas yeah but uh do you fly into cape town or do you fly into soweto or fly into cape town. Sorry. 12 hours coach because I'm a psycho. and you, uh, 12, yeah, okay. On which airline? Uh, it's called Air Link. Real trash. Okay. Don't do it. And uh, yeah, we just had a great time. And the Rand, everything's in Rand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so cheap. You know, it's like, that is 450 Rand. You're like, Jesus. And that's like. And they were overcharging you anyway. Yeah, <laughs> you <know>? yeah. <laughs> that's like $38 or something. Did you stay in like Champs Bay or Camps Bay? Or... I, I stayed right on the harbor, but it was yeah. it was a five minute drive to Camps Bay. We did that every day and just the sun was out. We'd have beers on the beach. It was great. And then did you did you see like big cats and stuff like that? Did you do the safari? I did the safari. The, we flew to uh, Mozambique and then drove two hours through the jungle, and it was it was life changing. Nice. I grew up in Africa. I grew up in oh, Lagos, really? Nigeria. So oh, I didn't know that. That's kind of home for me. Seventeen years. Whoa. Yeah. Why? 
huh? My dad, my parents can smell when I'm happy and then they <laughs> move me. Uh, but no, when I was, my dad was making tomato pulp and uh, pre-cut potato chips in Lagos, Nigeria. Wow. And that's where what? I grew up. And then I, I went to boarding school in India when I was nine. But Nigeria was home for like the first 17 years. Wow. Damn. Do you speak? Uh, I speak a little bit of Yoruba and a little bit of like pidgin English. Boy, you are fucking cultured. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Outsider. I wanna, everywhere. I can you do their accent? Like huh? when they speak English? I do it in the special a little bit. But oh, yeah? like uh, it's the pidgin English is kind of English that was spoken so that the English wouldn't know what was being said. Oh. You know, so if it is uh, I'm going to go have some lunch. It's like I go chop now. Oh, uh, it's almost like Ebonics. Yeah, like it's like slang. Yeah, so it's you know, so that I speak a little bit. Damn, yeah. but it's a the wonderful like Nigeria. I think is one of the most sort of badass. Yeah, uh, just energy flying, sexual, fun places on the planet. Oh, really? Do you ever I, go back? Uh, yeah, uh, I go back sort of once every three years. People in Lagos can party, man. Like uh, that is, <laughs> it's a hell of a place. And comedy is just getting there. They yeah. have a comedy club in Kenya now, and uh, I think in Nigeria. But it's coming. So let me ask one question. So mm -hmm. what's your type? You, are you straight? Yes. Do yeah, you like uh, married, Nigerian women, or do you like uh, Indian women? Like, what's your like? This is my thing, because like, I feel like what you grow up with is uh, what you end up liking. Nigerian and Indian women are very similar. Run hot, very emotional, very intelligent, uh, and don't take shit at all so mm. they're very Nightmare. similar but i uh i've dated a nigerian girl and i've married an indian girl uh, damn you know, that works yeah both at the same time yeah i know yeah wow <laughs> well it's it's funny because indians got hot you know growing up in the 80s it was like top what was that fucking johnny five what's that guy's johnny name quest no no uh with the, the robot short circuit. short circuit yeah and i don't think the, i don't even think he was indian I don't think he was. And then you had a poo. It was Wasn't a that brown face or something? I think I, it was. That guy. Yeah, Fisher Stevens. Fisher Stevens. No, I had so many Indian Stevens out there. <laughs> no. ah. and that was brown face, guys. This is a Justin Trudeau uh, thing. And then you got Cal Penn kind of came in. And I think, you know, you got your knee meshes and your veer dosses. Yeah, and but Indian your... women have always been hot. Like, always yeah. been hot. The, the oh, yeah. problem is the distance between Indian women and Indian men in vanity is just gigantic. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I don't know, Scandinavian people, the women are as good looking as the men. Would right, you say that? Right, right. Sure. Whether you find them good looking or not. I but, prefer the women, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, like, Indian women are beautiful and Indian men are with them. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and you, got, you got Hassan Minaj. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a... He's, he's got a jawline. Disney prince, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> big eyes, big hair. I've never heard of... that. And that makes so much sense. I mean, it's, fun, it's funny when your friend just reveals they find another man very attractive. <laughs> He's gorgeous. He is, but the guy, a Disney prince is such a specific. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think about him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but he's coming on here at some point. We're going to get him yeah, on Yeah, we got to get him on here. Yeah, he's a sweet guy. He did, the, he did my other pod. He did my Games with Names pod because we got Mike Bibby on, who's his favorite basketball player. Have you guys had up. Aziz on? No. no we should, he don't, doesn't you don't do think it. he's a Disney prince, huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't he doesn't, see the Aziz, Aziz cartoon? Doesn't, Aziz no. doesn't do podcasts. Yeah? Not really. Not really. I mean, no. we got Colin Quinn on who d really doesn't do podcasts. That's so. true. And David Tell. And we got a Tell on who's... Both of them Disney princes. Is <laughs> 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 They're like the old man in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I met a Tell for 10 seconds at the cellar. Yeah, I think That's pretty good. Me. Yeah, he saw me and he was like... Ah. <laughs> 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 and he walked away and I was like, I think that was good. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> for him, How that's familiar good. were you with Attel before coming to New York? I, I knew, uh, the, what was that show, Insomniac? Yeah. yeah. So that was on when I was in college in the States. So I remember him from that. But I, I was ignorant to the comedic legacy of him oh, at, yeah. at, at the cello. You He's know, our so, goat, kind of. Yeah. And I think at the cello, there are these things, right? There's the comedian's table, and then you sure. have to earn your space at that table. And he, so I, I learned all of that stuff. Right. You know. Well, put a P on it. It's Patel. Yeah. <laughs> True. All right. right. He's right. <laughs> He's right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Woo, no, comedy. It was a nice 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he's, everybody thinks Attel hates him, and uh, he's the sweetest guy. He's just a little fidgety. Yeah. He yeah. is He is like a bodega cat. Mm -hmm. Guy who just keeps working a plug for his product. Yeah. He's grumpy. <laughs> he's kind of like a cat. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes you just have to say, fuck it. You know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we 
we go. <laughs> <laughs> Musty's out, everybody. <laughs> but Attell is like a cat where you're just kind of like grateful. You're like, you're like, all right, pet, and then he just like runs away. Yes. And you're like, yeah, I got a yeah. second with him. Yeah, you just you got to let him come to you like yeah. a cat. He's got to rub your leg. <laughs> I go into like uh, for me head movements are everything in terms of feedback because especially with comics and even in in like movies or whatever. If if somebody comes out of a screening or somebody comes out of uh, watching you i find that if they do this it's sort of up and down you did good irrespective okay. of what they say but if they ever go like uh. you know or like it's ever side to side yeah They'll say something nice, but you're fucked up. You know, it's right. always like it's always like those costumes, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, this is a piece of shit. That's so true. <laughs> those costumes. You mean my outfit and my special? <laughs> Seinfeld Ouch. had that funny bit about how you can tell how bad a relationship's going by wh- how high they touch their face. You know, I was like, how's it going with that girl? It's going pretty good. Or it's like, I gotta get out. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's an oldie. Speaking of bits, our guest has to go on fifteen. Mm-hmm. So can we do bits? Or peeves? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you have any bits or peeves? Any pet oh, yeah. peeves? I have peeves. Uh, oh, please. Okay, I. This is very pretentious, but I do not like a hotel where the staff is cool, like the hotel desk guy is mm. cool and calls you bro. <laughs> like this I, is a specific one. It's very specific, but yeah. you, you know, like like I a don't W know, Soho House or something, or like yeah. the, the W where they're like, "Hey, bro, welcome." I'm like, no. At this price, it's Mr. Das. <laughs> 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 like, fucking, shut up and stop being this Instagram person. Yes, like, I cannot stand that. We're not friends. Also, yeah. Like, let's not go right to bro. I'll never see you again. And yeah, also, you where did that come from? Bro is I have a bro. Mm-hmm. There you go. He's my yeah. brother. But there are these like I think the. Uh, the 60 range of hotels like 60 LES on the yes, lower east side yes. or like Soho House or the W so always like some cool guy who has as many Instagram followers as you do right, right. Uh, and it's like hey man what's up and I'm like no I, I cannot do that I don't know why yeah what, like what do you that. think it is do you think it makes you feel less cool that he's being cool or what is it it's so not genuine Ge- not genuine that's what it is yeah you can just like he says that to everybody and you're right. like don't make me feel special that's what it is I also yeah. feel like he would have more fun in that hotel room than <laughs> <I would. laughs> you know like that's the guy the room is meant for right, uh, right. It's just, he's sending me over that's one um, that's a good one I don't like guys with uh, barber done beards Oh, you know, so if it Puerto looks Rico. Like, way, like, <laughs> if it's way too shaped and way too sharp, I can't do it. I'm with you. Right? Yeah, because it's a narcissism thing. Yeah. Like, you want to keep, you want to look in the mirror for a while and make it perfect. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like the one side, you know, like, yes. I, like, I like a DIY build. I feel the same way about guys who are really into their birthday. Like, if a guy doesn't notice it's his birthday, I like that guy. You know, guy like, oh, yeah, it's my birthday. So the guy's depressed. Yeah, <laughs> that's my kind No, but of guy. I'm with Mark oh. on this one. When someone's like, it's my birthday week, I'm uh, like, oh, I guess I got to come up with seven excuses now. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where do you stand on gender reveal videos and parties? Because that seems to be a uniquely American thing. I don't, I yeah, don't know anyone stupid. who would do that. So it, that's the thing where, like, it and doesn't it doesn't affect me. What? Yeah. yeah, like, there's a lot of deaths with those. Like, a lot of shit catches on fire because they always try to be really extravagant. Pull yeah, it up. Yeah, you can't tell if it's blue or because uh, it's red now, you know? <laughs> so, by the way, in, in India, Africa, many other Asian countries, you're not supposed to know, right? The doctor ah. won't tell you. Uh, China, they China know. as well. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, there's a know. reason why they're. <laughs> <laughs> but, like in, in Nigeria, for instance, the doctor would be like, oh, uh, yeah, no, uh, baby's healthy, maybe uh, buy a football. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Know, but it's against the law. It's a it. lesbian. <laughs> <laughs> I got a peeve for you. Hit me. How about this? This has driven me crazy my whole fucking life, and I forgot about it since we've been doing the show, and somebody did it yesterday. I had a big question. Somebody got me something. I go, where'd you get that? Or where, I lost something, and they found it. I go, where'd you find that? How'd you do it? He goes, magic. <laughs> I what? hate the magic. Just tell me what. Tell me the answer to the question. Magic. You know that guy? Like, how'd you get that TV in here? Magic. No, give me the answer. Do you think maybe that's a guy who just says magic all day? <laughs> like, good morning. Magic. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But How'd you uh, break into my hotel room? Magic. magic. <laughs> yeah. Even magic's not magic. You know, how'd you saw the woman in half? There's uh, mechanics to it. It's not actual magic. But at least they have a reason for saying magic. That's true. That's yeah. their job. Right. Yeah. You're just a fucking jerk off. Jerk off. And, I, and he walked away. I was like, well, I still want to know, but now I guess I don't know. <laughs> well, how about this guy? I'll tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. 
Yeah. yeah. Kill me. Just kill me. K- kill me right now. Yeah. I hate, I hate life that I have to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the offer you both meals on the flight when she knows one meal doesn't exist. Ah, yes. That's you know, a great one. Would you like the chicken or the vegetables? I'd like the chicken without a chicken. Ah. Like, Bitch, you knew that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> great one. Give me hope. So true. And, <laughs> and make 80% chicken and 20% veggie. We're all going to want the chicken. Yeah. There's going to be a couple of stragglers, but come on. It's yeah. like when they do decaf and coffee. Oh, my God. Same, That's same a peeve. I was in a hotel room once. I get three decaf packets, one regular. In what world does that ratio make a fucking lick of sense? <laughs> exactly. I once... Uh, Sorry, I got really angry. Yeah, though. I've never seen you so animated. I had a lot of regular coffee. That's why. <laughs> There's a hotel called the West End in Bengaluru uh, in India, which is kind of like this old uh, colonial property where... They'll unpack your bag. Ooh. Like uh, the guy kind of came in and put my bag down and I went to take a piss and I came back and he was unrolling my socks. What? And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I'm your butler. And I'm like, A, I'm, I'm an Indian boarding school child. So for me to make a man older than me touch my shoes is like hugely. Right. Yeah, right. for me. So don't touch my socks and shoes. Also, like I have junk in that suitcase that you don't need to see. You know, like I have weed in there. I have other stuff in there. Which He's is, rolling you a joint. <laughs> just like, Good evening, sir. Uh, yeah, no, that's crazy. That's very intrusive. Dude, this is a, I'll tell you this. This is a great sort of Dubai story. If you're ever going to Dubai. So in Dubai, if you look like an artist, you get what's called the Dubai check. Mm. which is where, you know, if you have piercings, if you have tattoos, they will undo the lining of your suitcase, unroll every sock. It takes an hour mm. at customs to see if you have drugs. Whoa. Right? And if, you, uh, if you're caught with drugs in Dubai, you're not coming out for a while because they have a zero tolerance policy. Bye bye. And yeah. I, know, <laughs> I know a musician who plays the guitar and he's been playing it since he was three years old. And he had shoes in his bag. And underneath the shoes, they found a stubbed out joint. Uh. Just like that much of a joint, right? And so he's like, I'm going away for fucking life. And like these guys are making calls because they're like, okay, we got one. Yeah. And he picks up his guitar and he's like, I'm not going to get to touch a guitar again for the next 20 years. And starts to play in the terminal. And all these guys just kind of sit down and watch him play for like 20 minutes. And they're like, we're letting you go because we've never seen anyone play guitar at this level. Wow. wow. We're putting you on a flight. Get the fuck out of the UAE and never come back. Wow. Damn. Brittany Griner should have dribbled a ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that would never happen with comedy. Hold on. <laughs> let me do tight eight. What's where, up where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> What's up with airline security? <laughs> hey, are you married, sir? They just start beating the shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Take my guitar, please. <laughs> <laughs> I got I gotta peeve. All right, hit me. Uh, guy who got engaged messages me, who I'm not even close with, messages me. First off, yeah, the engaged, already peeved. Just leave me alone. He goes, uh, I got engaged. It's Mark. And uh, no, it's a uh, guy who got engaged, and he wrote me, uh, you know, we got engaged, and we we're trying to pay it forward, so we want to set you up with someone. Pay it forward? How about you suck my dick? Oh, like a charity. Yeah, like, uh, we want to help out. I don't, you think I want to be set up yeah. by your fucking candy ass? Yeah. <laughs> When the setup happens, because in India that's like a marriage, right? Yeah, but, uh, right. But when like a not cash, the same case here, not at the all. same case. But no. like, do you only meet at the date then? Y- I guess I don't know. I'm not, I said no. There. Good, you got Raya. You're good. I'm you got good. Tinder. You're yeah. fine. Oh, is Raya famous people who Tinder? Is hot what? people. And him. Oh. And me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Harry Boys. <laughs> Harry Boys. <laughs> That's the Kevin Spacey novel. Um, but, but the argument is they know what's good for you better than you do. Aha. Uh-huh. And he's got engaged, so he's like, I know about coming together. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, because they know the real you, right? Like, yeah. they know you like you can't see yourself. People try to set me up a lot. I try to get set up a lot. You're a catch. Oh, Tall, full head of hair, successful. <laughs> or maybe they're like, he doesn't have long, much. <laughs> 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 He's got about 10 more years of hotness yeah. left. Let's I mean, ever since Mark called Hassan a Disney fucking prince. <laughs> Ooh, I mean, he's a hunk. He is a hunk. Would so, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You would? Well. <laughs> I mean, you'd be in the new special then. You know? <laughs> That'd be a nice That's true. story about you. <laughs> That's true. So you don't like getting set up at all? I don't, I don't like the... I, it's so much pressure. I agree. Yeah. I've uh, somehow... Uh, I've never dated dated. 
Really? Like I've I've had one terrible first date where I uh I was trying to date a girl before her and I was trying to pick up a girl on, on the Wednesday before I met this girl on a Friday and this girl forgot that we were on a date. So I kind of showed up at her house and she was in shorts and had like a you know just a bun on and and sh- I was like are we going out she's like can we do this another time ah. at the front door. So now this new girl on the way to her house I called her 20 minutes before the date and I'm like are we still on and she's like yeah I'm in the shower ah. I'll see you in 20. Then I forgot to open the door for her so I ran over to my side of the car remember that I forgot to open the door for her ran around the car then realized that this looked weird so ran around the car another time <laughs> so i ran around the car twice and then opened her door which i guess she thought was for good luck uh, or some shit like, like that like a mocd <laughs> had four long island iced teas and threw up on her oh. was, was my date so that's like the last day yeah day long island iced tea is like that's that's a yeah, bad what are you thinking that's a bad drink Yeah. But I feel like here at least in New York this protocol, right? Like there's the coffee, yeah. and then there's the the dinner, dinner that will not lead to sex, and then there's the dinner where you don't eat which will lead to sex. Like isn't yeah. that the I just go drink sex. Yeah. Same yeah. night. Yeah, we're adults. Let's knock it out. Knock it out. <laughs> the, to, the sex is actually you, you more romantic. You. <laughs> like Mark orders your one drink. All right, pick it up. Pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can tell more about someone from the sex than the dinner, I think. Because the dinner is very phony. Oh, is that right? You, you have a master's. Uh-huh. But the sex, it's like, put a lampshade up my ass or whatever, you know? But first sex isn't real sex. <laughs> That's like, true. That's true. 56th sex is real sex. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When she's just laying there. That's the real her. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Or you get the weird sideways one. <laughs> That's really lazy. Yeah, where you try to be porn stars. You're like, let me put your leg this way yeah, and do this. Yeah. And she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Never sorry. works. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Weird ending of this episode. Because oh. we're all thinking about something we tried. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. We do have five minutes for bits if you're kicking bits? anything around, yeah, Mark. Do, I don't uh, know if I have anything good here. View, do you have anything you're kicking around? Um, like a premise, a half-baked. I have one where I'm like, and it's not a great one, but I oh. think... I was thinking about what America does about gun control, and I don't think your guns are going to go away. So and I don't think you're going to stop selling guns so maybe for a one year period of time only women buy guns. Ooh. And what does that do to America? Interesting. So I was like okay, murder would go down but assault would go up. <laughs> Cuz like for once a week your girlfriend would shoot you in the leg. Right. right. <laughs> Lecture you, take you to the hospital, bring you home and fuck your brains out. Uh Yeah. Cuz make for some good sex. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, For the first time, you'd know the anniversary. Like, uh, I got it. Oh, I got it. Put the gun down. Uh, I think, what else was it? There would be no more unsolved uh, like crimes. Right. There would be no true crime. Like, uh, the body was found in the forest. They'd be like, no, we heard yelling in the forest for six hours. <laughs> <laughs> until somebody screamed, you're making me do this. Uh, <laughs> it's not you, it's me. And then, uh, <clears throat> that's it. That's what I'm kicking around. Right? I like funny, it. Yeah. I like it. Ladies with guns. Ladies with guns. There's not a lot of female murderers or serial killers. No, they do they they do murder, but not do murder. serial killers. But women murder like with a drop of antifreeze in your oatmeal over like 6 months. But I don't think women want murder. I think women want Stockholm syndrome. They want to be know? heard. <laughs> you know, right. like they they use the gun like a tool yeah. just to be like listen to me. Yeah. Yes. And you'd be like for the first time I am. Can you put on the silencer? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you got something here. Yeah? Yeah. There's something there, yeah. I think, yeah, it would just be a threat. Like, uh, uh, you want to get dinner night? Nah, let's stay in. And she's like, and you're like, okay. <laughs> we'll get Italian. Yeah. Few of wars, but wars would last longer. Yes. Because we would yes. watch. Yes, they draw it out. Like and Russia we- and Ukraine would never end. <laughs> <laughs> like, just Olga Petrova running at Ivanka Jadziska, <laughs> whatever, with two guns. Be like, right, <laughs> right. Please fight. No, uh... Yeah, picking a movie would suck for the guy. Yeah. What should we see? Uh, 13 going on 30 or Goodfellas? You're like, we'll see. We'll see 13 going on 30. Oh, yeah. what do you, what like you I said, got? not very good. I, got, I don't know what I, I have, like man. I don't know if I have anything worthwhile quite There's yet. There's a lot there. Um, right. I, do you have anything more? I got one of you. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, this is also just yeah. nothing here maybe. But So I went on this safari and... You got these guides, this like Australian guy, he's got fatigues on, he's driving the Jeep, he's super manly. And 
there's this uh, animal rights lady in the Jeep with us, and she's very progressive. But yet, animal life is very conservative. It's strict gender roles. It's territorial. It's segregated. You know, the, the, there was one point where, like, a, a male wildebeest was fuck or humping another male wildebeest, and the guy was like, oh, what's going on there? And he's like, ah, there's two males. They're not having sex. They're just playing. So it's very strict, you know, old school. It's like the 50s, you know? And uh, I just thought it could be funny, like, what if a lion didn't want to do the gender roles? You know, it's like the lion's got to get the food, the male lion, and the female watches the cubs. And what if the male lion's like, fuck this, I want to do a podcast? <laughs> or, you know, the girl's like, I want to be a graphic designer. I don't want to do this either. Because we have the uh, privilege to sway and, and run around and do different shit. Would also be funny in that world, like, you need the dude to kill. Yes. Yeah. That, that's funny to me. Like, you need the, like, they don't get to choose. Right. They're they at war with other animals. And there's yeah. no victim shit. Like, they'll just kill an impala, and that's it. There's not, like, a protest. Like, we got to stop these lions from killing the impala. We're people, too, you know? It's also, just... They don't get to talk about the killing afterwards. Like, if, if I had to kill for my wife... I wouldn't shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know, I would, I would bring home the body. We yes. would talk about the body. You would, there would be a selfie with the body. Yes. You would bang me for the body. You right. know, like, but male lions are just like, uh, here's a body. So yeah. No gloating. No gloating. That's good. Overkilling. All right. That's funny. I think we got something here. It's very old school. I have a ve this is just an idea I had. There's like nothing really here yet, but I, I, I threw this out there and this kind of got something, but it needs more. But it was about how uh, I met with someone at TikTok and I was like, what's the deal? All my videos get pulled down on TikTok. Everything's like hate speech to you guys. I, I had a Nazi joke get pulled down. She goes, well, you can't. There's robots that can't detect sarcasm. So they, if you talk about Nazis, they have no sense of humor about it. And I was like, well, it sounds like a Nazi. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know like what it. I mean. So that hit, but I was like, I don't know where the fuck to go with that. But it's yeah. like, is that good for anything? Uh, robots are monitoring. That's who's in charge of comedy right, on, the, right. on your app is robots. Yeah, this is an art form. This is all subjective. And we got a robot at the helm. That's crazy. I don't want to. I feel. I feel nervous calling this an art form because because well, then the angle yeah. is like you know what what if a uh, fucking if you saw like a Pollock and and a robot's like nope. <laughs> right, right, right. But then, but you know what I mean? Like, maybe that is the angle. I don't know. Maybe there's, uh, you go to like, there should be a, like when you go to a comedy show at the cellar or whatever, there should be a capture for a comedy show <laughs> to ah, get you in. Where, yes. where you're like, pick like, you know, whatever squares have buses in them. Yes. And if you fail, you're allowed into the comedy show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> If you fuck that up. Yeah. Robots. Yeah, That's robots. That's the future. We're gonna, can't AI write a joke right now? AI can yeah, do stand up. Chat right? GDT or GBT yeah. is, is like writing you like rap write songs. Ten minutes on, you know, airline food and it'll do it. I know. Wow. Like all these kids are using it for term papers and shit. It's blowing up. It's amazing. Remember, like doing papers on. I mean, we were like the end of the, the beginning of the internet. So it was like you oh. find something, you're like, you fucking plagiarize this, you right? Know? Right. But now it's like you really fucking can get caught. I know. In the back of Rolling Stone, you, there was an ad for buy your term paper. Someone would do it for oh, you. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. In my college, we had something called the honor system, where you could take a you could take an exam, take a paper anywhere on campus, hmm. as long as it was outdoors, right? So you could take your exam, go out into the lawns, and kind of write it. And they had sixteen students who were like the honor police, who knew nobody knew who they were, right? And they would write you out. Whoa! Like I cheated in eighty percent of my exams. Yeah, because <laughs> like, I was like, nobody's gonna catch you. So I wow. just like go into my dorm room. And like finish half my paper. Yeah, no, I did college online because I've quit college to go do comedy. My parents, said, you got to finish it, so I finished it in New York online. And you just got the, you got Google right there. Yeah. You're, you're, it's so stupid. But I got the degree. Well, uh, Vito, oh, man, sorry, we didn't uh, do your bit. Oh no, I mean the bit is whatever. It's I'll figure it out. But maybe a Nazi would like the Jew jokes. You know, you go back to the Nazi thing. Oh yeah, send them more Jew jokes. Yeah, that's how you get back into TikTok. Not Nazi jokes. Right. Send that robot Jew jokes. Because it's a Nazi. Yeah, well, that might be... No, 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 no. No, 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 I'm thinking, I'm thinking, no, I think the angle, that is funny. If you're like, the Jew jokes are... Those are working. Those don't get pulled down. I'm like, man, these this really is Nazis. Yeah, that could be the angle. Uh-huh. Okay. Man, they find these Jew jokes hilarious. Yeah, there's something there. Stole it from you. All right. All right. So here are some dates. Oh, we got some dates from okay. here. Uh, go straight to March because those February dates are pushed. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, that's where I'm at. 
Uh, All right. West Palm, um, Huntsville, Alabama. Nashville, Baltimore, Sacramento. Of course, she watches new special landing on Please Netflix. Do. Yes. Me, my eyes are bad and that's far away, so I wouldn't be able to read Milwaukee, that. Milwaukee, Austin, Providence, New Haven. Oh, Brea Improv. That's fun. That's yeah. a fun one. Yeah, San Antonio. Get the breakfast tacos. Good time. Houston. Uh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Nice. Oh, you got some good rooms. Yep, with my three new minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you build it, though. I can't yeah. wait. That singer-songwriter is going to bury you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Do you want Sam uh, dates? Yeah, let's yeah. get some other dates going on. Also, get Bodega Cat Whiskey Woo! at bodegacatwhiskey.com. Get fuck it. Get fuck uh, it. Please get yeah, fuck it. I got uh, Vancouver coming up, uh, Seattle, Portland. Keep going down, Salamanca. Uh, what else? Salt Lake City, Huntington. Yeah, you can read it. Atlantic buddy. City in February. There you yeah. go. Uh, Royal Oak, March 2nd. Yeah. That's a good room. It's Minneapolis, good room, yeah. March 3rd. That's a big one. Yeah. Another good Milwaukee, room. New Haven, Connecticut. Boston, Boston, Boston. Whoa, what's that? The Wilbur. The one of the best rooms in the country. That many yeah. nights? Five yeah. nights? Four right now. We're going to add a fifth. Hell yeah. yeah. And then uh, Miami, Orlando, Ponte Verde, which is basically Jacksonville, Atlanta, mm. Charleston, Durham, Charlottesville. Tickets still available for that one. Yeah, Norfolk, one. DC added the second one there. Wilkes Bar and Portchester. More coming soon, but we, we love you guys. Thanks for buying tickets. Yes. And get, uh, you got a ton of great stuff on YouTube too. So check Please out do. all of us on YouTube. Yeah. We got a ton of stuff. Uh, I'm all over the road. Hawaii, uh, oh boy, Miami. Miami. I can't read any of this. Uh, Spokane Mullet, Comedy Mullet Club. Arena? Mullet Arena. Oh, I'm doing. Uh, we're doing the Super Bowl with Kreischer. Whoa. That'll be fun in Phoenix. Spokane. Are you really? Yeah. Not that? we're not oh. doing the Super Bowl. We're going to the Super Bowl, but oh. doing a theater the night before. Okay. Five shows doing a halftime show. I'm like, it's you and Rihanna? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. She's opening for me. I thought you would have mentioned that. No, no. <laughs> you know, I hit her once. Um, let's see. The Skyline in yeah. February. And then after that. Rochester, uh, Comedy at the Carlson, Laugh It Up. All kinds of fun stuff. Poughkeepsie, New York. Come on by. We got a special taping in March, so I'm really trying to in hammer Chicago? this thing down. In Chicago. Nice. At the Vic. All right. I've seen, I've seen, you were weird about saying it last week. Uh, I never know what we can say. but You can say whatever. Nah, you're right. Fuck it. The N-word. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That's Bye, the end. Guys. <laughs> That's, a good end. That's an end word. Thank you, boys. All <laughs> right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Veer. Sunday's the day for my next fender. A bit of Pivarek, you know the beer juice close. I've had a little too much bourbon. And Norman's talking shit about the fucking post. Doesn't look like I remember her